In this video, I'm going to talk about VACL or VLAN access control list. First, we should understand the concept of the VACL. After that, we can talk about the configuration and also verification. First, let me to review the RACL. You learned about the RACL previously and you know that RACL or rotor ACL okay is the most common version of the acl that we use it actually we should configure our acl between two network this is our rotor and we configure our acl on this rotor and with this racl okay we can control which traffic can enter okay from one interface to to one interface of rotor or it can go out from one interface of rotor actually our acl or rotor acl control the traffic between the networks not inside of the network also you know that we have the similar acl or acl in mls or multi-layer switch when we want to control the traffic between two for example interface vlan actually again we can con assign we can have applied the ACL in inbound direction uh, direction or outbound direction to the SVI interface for example interface VLAN 1 interface VLAN 2 okay but now I'm going to talk about the VACL the new type of ACL and in this type of ACL VLAN ACL actually we can control traffic inside of the VLAN inside of the network not between the networks okay actually packets that stay in the same VLAN do not cross a VLAN or interface boundary and do not necessarily have a direction in relation to, the, to an interface. These packets also might be non-IP or completely breached okay therefore they never pass through the multi-layer switching mechanism. VLAN access list or VACL are filters that directly can affect how packet are handled within a VLAN, not between the VLANs. VACL are somewhat different from RACL or traditional access control list, although they too are merged into the ternary cam or a TCAM actually, they can permit deny or redirect packet as they are matched. VACL also are configured in a roadmap fashion within a, with a series of matching condition and actions to take. Let me to show you the VACL function after that you can better understand the VACL and also the detail of VACL. Here as you can see we have a simple scenario in this simple scenario we have switch one and all of the interfaces of the switch one are members of one vlan vlan 10 for example means one network and also here we have four hosts for example i used rotors you can use pcs or some other host but i'm going to use the rotor because i want to show you for example telnet connectivity or ip connectivity and so on because of that in this scenario i'm going to use the rotor but it is not important to use rotor you can use only a simple pc Okay, here I'm going to show you how you can configure the VACL. The mechanism that we should use for configuration of the VACL is so easy. First, you should define VLAN access map. This is a thing like the roadmap. And after that, after configuration of the VLAN access map, you should apply your access map, okay, to the VLAN or VLANs. So apply VLAN access map, okay, to VLAN. For example, here I want to configure a VLAN access map for communication in the VLAN 10 and after that we can apply it to the VLAN 10. It is so easy. Let me to uh, uh, write here the objective or uh, our, our scenario. I'm going to show you how we can limit the communication inside of the VLAN. For example, R1 should has a connectivity or IP connectivity okay, uh, to the router 3 only and after that R2 should has uh, connectivity with a uh, telnet okay only to the router 4 this is 
a requirement and we should configure it. This is only a simple example. You can extend the example with other uh, features. First, you should define the VLAN access map. In this VLAN access map, we will permit the IP traffic from R1 to R3 and Telnet traffic from R2 to R4. And after that, we will apply the VLAN access map. The logic of VLAN access map is so similar with the uh, roadmap here. You can see the configuration of VLAN access map. Look at here. VLAN access map, then you should configure a map name. For example, a name that is suitable for your uh, access map. And after that, we should configure sequence number. Let me to use here sequ sequ sequence number. And then we should define ACLs. With ACL, we can uh, match the traffic. We can classify the traffic actually. Match IP address, ACL number or ACL name. You can use ACL or numbered ACL and also named ACL uh, here. Let me to use a match ACL number, ACL name. And also don't forget if you want, you can use MAC address ACL, MAC based ACL actually. Here we have some actions, action drop, forward. Uh, about the actions, you can use drop, drop and with the log option and forward. And also we have the option of redirect. In this video, I'm not going to talk about the redirect. And after configuration of the VLAN access map, we can apply this access map with this command to the VLAN. VLAN filter, then map name, then to which VLAN, to, for example, with this VLAN list. I will configure and you can better understand the function. But before configuration of the VACL, first we should configure the scenario. You know that. In each security scenario, first you should have connectivity between all devices. After that, you can configure the uh, scenario or the uh, objectives. Here, we have switch one, then router one, then router two, then router three, and after that, router four. In the switch one, we don't have any configuration. Also in the router one, also in the router two, and router three and router four. Okay, first let me to configure the switch one. You know that in switch one, we should assign all of these interfaces uh, to the VLAN 10 actually here. Uh, we don't have any, any uh, non-default VLAN show. VLAN brief can show us we have VLAN one and all this all of these four interface, ETH00, ETH01, ETH02, ETH03 are members of the ET VLAN one. Let me to configure VLAN 10, okay? This is a simple scenario. You can configure multiple VLANs, VLAN 10, and then interface, Okay, range ETH 00 203. Uh, we can use switch port access VLAN, for example, 10 and switch port mode access. Now we have four interfaces in the VLAN, the 10 config, configure terminal host name switch one. Show VLAN brief can show us all of these four interfaces ETH 00, 01, 02, and 03 are members of the VLAN. 10. This is the first step. In the router 1 to router 4, we can assign IP address. Enable configure terminal. This is the router 1. IP, okay, at, uh, on the interface uh, first. Let me to configure hostname, hostname R1. Interface gigabit 01. In the router 1, we have gigabit 01, okay. IP address is the 10.0.0.1255255550. And then no shutdown. Here you can see. And then in the router 2, let me to configure it. Enable configure terminal hostname, uh, for example, router 2. And then interface gigabit 00. IP address is 10.0.0.2255255550. No shutdown. And after that, in the router 3, enable configure terminal hostname R3 interface gigabit 00, IP address is 10.0.0.3, then 255255550, then 255 and then no shutdown. And finally, in the router 4, enable again and then configure terminal hostname R4 interface gigabit 00, IP address is 10.0.0.4255255550, no shutdown. Now, we don't have any VACL because of that, we expect to see connectivity between R1, R2, R3, and R4. Let me to verify the connectivity from R1. Ping 10.0.0.2. As you can see, we will have connectivity. Yes, we have connectivity to the router 3. Again, we have connectivity. Okay, and finally, 10.0.0.4. This is the first step. 
okay and now we can uh, define our policies first you know that we want to have a, a connectivity ip connectivity between the r1 and r3 let me to configure the acl you know that we use acl for classification like the roadmap okay here you can configure a standard acl extended acl numbered or named let me to configure ip access list in the switch one ip access list extended okay 